The picture collection exists in the Mid-Manhattan Library. It's a public library in Manhattan. And it's a room within the library that contains over 12,000 folders. And all of these folders are labeled with terms. So it will be anything from sadness to skin to waiting. And these folders are all filled with images that have been culled since 1915 corresponding to those terms and they've been called by different curators, librarians and individuals who have been charged with having this picture collection grow and it's this great mix of what is deemed high and low art because you'll have a Ouija photograph or something from the Farm Security Administration, a Walker Evans photograph mixed with an ad image or a ripped postcard or something that seems more disposable and there's kind of no uh, delineation between the two. Where did you get the idea to find this collection and, and kind of examine it? I've actually been going there since I was quite young, just wow. to look at it. It's always been really inspiring, and there's a history of artists going there um, through the years. Diego Rivera did a lot of research there. Andy Warhol stole a bunch of uh, folders from the picture collection, famously, and had people in theater and fashion and advertising and writers have gone there for years and now that practice has sort of been replaced by all these online searches and possibilities so it's kind of lost its utility. So you had 12,000 folders to go through. How did you choose the ones that you wanted to focus on for the project? I started actually not even because it's so overwhelming in terms of the content. I just uh, looked at printed out pages with lists of all the terms that are in the library and checking off ones that were of interest to me and then kind of going and looking inside them seeing because some have thousands of images and some only have 10 images and oftentimes it's it's interesting to see something that fits into the yellow folder could also be in the hair combing folder could also be in sunlight could also be in wow. men so how do these decisions and ways of categorizing occur whereas online now you could have it correspond to all of those terms but they, these are physical objects, so they kind of have to be limited to one folder. So one thing I was curious about mm -hmm. is um, how the simplicity of these folders' titles yeah. were complicated by what you found when you opened the folder, what was inside. Well, it's, I mean, a couple examples of that are things like accidents. And I, I went inside the folder, and of course there are car accidents and um a dead man on the side of the road, but then it'll it'll collide with an image with ketchup squirting on someone's shirt and a cat knocking a vase off a table. Mm. So there, you have all these different levels. And then in um, something like veils, you'll have hundreds of fashion images of these different sort of veiled caps. And, th and then you'll have a number of images of hijabs and coverings. And um, so you have these different takes on a on a single term and uh, something like rear views which is 50 percent pictures of butts and then also including just looking back on things and uh, literally seeing things from behind but not focused on the rear. Would you consider this public library collection in New York to be kind of a precursor to image search online the way we have it today? Definitely um, to me, it shows this consistent impulse to categorize and set up ways of indexing, controlling, and understanding information before we had the possibilities that technology allows. So just that being a kind of human instinct to seek order and to find some way of comprehending the mass or chaos that surrounds us.